Hey everybody, we're trying to go live and Instagram doesn't really want to play the game. So we're going live without Instagram. Um, oh, maybe. It worked. We're going live with everybody. Boom. Okay. How, uh, I know I'm a few minutes late, but I think I'm doing pretty good considering I'm I'm all often like quite a bit late. So please in the chat, tell me where you're from. And I'm hearing my own voice here and I don't like that. I don't know what to do, but. So yeah, put me, I don't know what you're saying. I'm trying to figure out my own. So let put, put in the chat where you're from. And I'm going to see if I can figure out my own. Okay. This could be annoying if I have to do this, but every time I hear, maybe, oh, I know. Oh, turn this off. Yeah. I think that worked. Okay. Two. I have a question for you. And that is. Uh, you may or may not have seen this already, but on, um, I think it was on Facebook, we put up a question as to who should be my demo dog today. Should it be, uh, and I'm going to give you the list. We didn't actually do do the list. We just, um, we had pictures on, on Facebook, but leave a comment. Uh, there is actually a kind of an obvious winner, which... I'm not going to, I'm not going to share who, who went on the social media poll, but who do you think should be my demo dog? I'm going to be doing three dog training demos today. Should it be my puppy, my eight month old puppy? Should it be my 13 year old senior dog? Should it be my actual nine year old veteran? I, when I, when I was helping somebody uh, on my team, put the slide together, I said, maybe in my, in my brain, I wish momentum was seven years old. Um, or, my three-year-old this, and if and if you're a podcast listener, you probably know this is story. And or the 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 bulldog, the rescue bulldog mix, tater salad. Okay, so who do you vote for? I gotta tell you, when I saw the results of the poll on social media, it made me a little bit weepy. In a million years, I would never have guessed this the dog. I thought for sure it would be one of the boys. One of the three boys was going to win for sure in my brain. So, um, and I think, yeah, maybe here, we got people from Germany and from all over the United States. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Budapest, woohoo, I love Hungary. Um, so, one demo dog today. Tomorrow, I will have a different demo dog. One demo dog today. And the winner on social media was this, by a landslide. Uh, and I'm like, wow, like she often gets lost in the shuffle. She's not like a flashy dog. And if you know the story with of this, um, we had a long journey in our dog training because of some GI um, challenges that I didn't know until she was almost two years old. And, um, so she was incredibly definitely in my 33 years as a professional dog trainer. And I have trained some real challenges. Definitely. This was the most challenging dog I've ever trained. And then the reason was because she was being fed the wrong food. And that's the story you can find, learn all about on Shape by Dog, uh, episode number 170 and 171, I believe. But I think it was super cool that so many of you wanted me to demo with this. I can't tell you the last time I think we did a demo with her. So I'm just going to go to the training cam right now and you guys can take a little peek on, there she is, resting up for the big event. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I thought that was super cool that, that as a community, most of you thought of this and, uh, and I think of maybe of all the dogs that I own, everybody says taters, like, like the everyone dog, the tater salad is just like everybody else's dog. I think 
this is this definitely is not a typical border collie. So I, I think she'll be a great dog um, for for me to use as a demo for today's for today's um, presentation. First of all, can I have some heart? Our fourth year. This is our fourth year anniversary of the podcast Shape by Dog. Hearts for all of you out there who have tuned in, who have posted some really beautiful uh, reviews. Um, we got, I think, the very first two star we've ever got. We got yesterday morning, but vast majority have been giving us five stars, and I love you for that. And um, it 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 couldn't have, it couldn't have happened without the feedback from you guys, both your comments, your questions, um, your showering us, the team, not just me, shout, those of you watching Shape My Dog on YouTube, showering the team with all the praise. Reinforcement builds behavior, guys. And my team feels that. Um, the appreciation for all they do to make the learning experience such an enjoyable one for everybody tuning in on YouTube. Like If, if you haven't watched any of our uh, episodes on YouTube, I encourage you to do so. Start with episode number 100, one of my favorites. So Today, it's Shape by Dog live and unscripted, meaning um, there might be, I was going to say unfiltered, but that's kind of every day of my life. Um, this is unscripted in that maybe some of the conversations that I see in the comments might affect where we go and what we do, but I definitely have some things that I want to share with you. Last week, we talked about training and I mentioned something called nuances, that training is all about nuances. So many great comments on that episode that I decided I'm going to do four sessions all about nuances. And so this first session, what I'm, I'm going to promise you is going to happen is that you will have a, a new, a new um, clarity. You'll have new clarity as to the impact of nuances, it's all around food reinforcement today. So it's something that like, if I did it about toys or maybe I'd be cutting off some of you. And so food, all the dogs have to eat. Therefore, all the dogs will be open to getting food reinforcement. So you're going to be inspired by what is possible with clarity with when we really focus on clarity after today, I know you're going to go, wow, um, such such little nuances, but I'm inspired by what I see that is possible. You're going to be you're you're going to be um, motivated to take action with your own dog after today, because I'm going to be giving you the exact steps. You can do it with your dogs at home. If you've got more than one dog at home, you can do it with all your dogs at home. I'm just trying to read some of the comments and make sure that I um, I don't pass anyone by. After today, you're going to know exactly what potentially has been sabotaging your progress with your own dog and how you can fix it. Also, um, today I'm going to share with you at the end, I'll share with you, spoiler alert right now. Later this week, we're going to do something which we rarely do, and that is we're going to open all of our programs in honor of our fourth Shape by Dog anniversary. I will, um, that's not going to happen until the end of the week, but later uh, at the end of today, I'm going to share how you can get a sneak peek inside what's going on there. So all of that is going to be happening um, today. But before we go crazy, I got to tell you, I've got prizes. Can you grab me that um, one that's on the crate for me, please, Linda? Awesome that um, longtime friend of the program and contributor to the program, Coach uh, LOH is in the house helping out. On the crate, the topper there? Mm -hmm. under, the, under the blanket and the, thank you. All right, so I have prizes I'm giving away today. And prizes, first of all, this beauty, how beautiful is that? This is a tug toy by the good people at For My Merles. And they told me I could give away this exact tug toy. It's like a fire tug. That's what I'm calling that one. Um, it's it that is an awesome tug toy. And I bet you that I'll play a little bit with Missy with that one later. And uh she'll she'll love that, I'm sure. Okay, so I'm gonna give away one of those. Um actually I'll give away two. The mat, the topper, please. Um I'm also 
well, I'll share at the end the prize. I'm going to give you the end, but I'm going to tell you how you can get this one immediately. Well, I'm not going to send it to you immediately, but anybody watching right now and anybody, if you're watching this on the replay, you can, you can be part of this. If you having based on all the things that I said, I'm going to share with you today, think that this is going to be worthwhile, then I encourage you to share it anywhere on social media, um, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, anywhere, share Susan Garrett is live talking about training nuances. Thank you. And um, give them the link to come and watch this. After you've done it, come on back in the comments, write shared. And if it's a different ID than what we see in the comments, then let us know where you shared it. And I'm going to give away two of these. So I'll give away one today at the end of the day. Linda, I know is going to remind me. And I'll give another another way away tomorrow because of the people that maybe it was too late or they you know, had to work and couldn't catch this live. All right. So going to give away. And then we also, these here, so there's going to be some barking. We also are um, going to, I'm just going to give you the heads up. There's another, yet another prize we're going to give away. And. I just want you to think about this as you're listening today, as you're watching today, keep in mind, what are your big takeaways? What are the either things you knew, but oh crap, I didn't realize the impact of that or things that are new to you, what we call gems. So just jot down your gems. And at the end of this, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know where you can share those, those gems. Okay. So that is everything that's happening today. I'm giving my coffee a little shake here. Now, if you've watched my pot or listened to my podcast, you know I talk a lot about curiosity. I think that's an amazing virtue to have because curiosity leads you to growth, the opportunity for knowledge. Curiosity, uh, I believe, lends itself to compassion. I think that they're like first cousins, if not even closer related than that. So the question I have for you after me sharing what I'm going to do, how many of you are curious about today? Do you have curiosity? Are you sitting there watching with curiosity? Let me know. I'm reading the comments. Look at all of you that shared. Thank you for that. You never know who you impact by sharing something like this. People who have never owned a dog before. They're, they're what we call so far from where you are right now. Some of you that are watching this are brand new to dogs and oh my gosh, like you couldn't have landed on a better live at a better time. Okay. I see. I see. Yes, absolutely. Lots of, lots of curiosity. <laughs> Where's that one? It said, yes, I'm a very noisy person, a noisy, nosy person. That's awesome. Hold oh, that was a good one. So curiosity is what's going to allow you to even if what I'm saying today is something that you may have heard, you're going to say, okay, is there anywhere, any way else that I can take this on board? Is there anywhere else that this would apply to my dog training? Because some of the things I'm going to show you today, you might go, oh yeah, I know that. Oh, I, I've got that. But be curious, watch and take it in. Is there another level of nuance you can take on board based on what I'm sharing today? Okay, so that's what I've got for you. Now, let's jump right in and I'm going to, if I can find my, uh, okay, so this is what we're going to be, what I'm going to be talking about today is, boom, uh, boom, there it is. Something that often gets referred to as LSRM. Location specific reinforcement markers. I've spoke about this in, in on the podcast, and I'm going to go a little bit deeper today. First question I have is, do you use any location specific reinforcement markers? And if you do, what ones do you use? And I'm going to share with you the ones that, that we'll be talking about today. And maybe you're going, Susan, I don't know what the heck a location specific reinforcement marker is. And that is a marker is like how many use a clicker? Have you ever used a clicker? That isn't a location specific reinforcement marker. That's a marker that indicates to the dog you are correct 
and you will be receiving a reinforcement. Okay, so a clicker is a non-specific in that it doesn't it doesn't give the dog any more information other than you're right. And sometimes like that's important, right? So a clicker is a marker that I'm sure many of you watching this have used before. But a clicker, there's a time and place when I would use a clicker. And I would say mostly it's when I'm doing something very specific. Like I'm trying to, I would like my dog to point his back leg. It's very difficult to, to shape that behavior um, without a clicker because it's, it, you know, it's, it's a nuanced behavior where we just want incremental uh, change. All right. So that is a marker, a location specific um, reinforcement marker is something that gives your dog more information. It adds a, an extra layer of clarity. It tell it may tell the dog what they should be doing when uh, after you say the marker. It may tell your dog where they should look to get their reinforcement. For example, if I was to say we're not going to talk about this today, but if I was to say the word strike, my dog would look on my body for for me holding up a toy. Strike means bite something, not me. That's a location specific reinforcement marker versus if I said, bring me, that would be on the floor somewhere. They're, they would immediately look away from me and look for something to, to pick up and bring to me, right? So why do we need location specific uh, reinforcement markers? It's a nuance that brings a depth of training that allows your dog to get understanding faster. Because let's say we were teaching a duration behavior. We wanted to teach our dog to do a, a, a down stay. And every time you put them into a down and you gave them a click, then they could come up and get their cookie. But then they would get reinforcement for leaving the down. And you know what? It would work. Eventually that dog would figure out to stay in a down stay. But if we had a location specific reinforcement marker that told the dog, I'm bringing the cookies to you, you don't have to go anywhere. Then your down stay would be exponent learned exponentially faster. Because not only would you be marking with your location specific reinforcement marker, not only would you be marking, I like it when you do that, the cookie comes in and says, keep doing that. I like that. Okay. So I have one word that is, I will be bringing you a cookie. And the word I use is the word. Now I used to use the word good. Um, but I just don't use cook in, in, in you know, many other places, except when I say the word cookie. And most dogs know what the word cookie means. So it helps them to understand it's attached to reinforcement. That's why I love the word cook. It means it's a location specific. No matter what you're doing, stay where you are. I will deliver the reinforcement to you. Okay. So the what I'm doing today, if your dog understands the game, it's your choice it's easier. But the cool thing is what I've picked out, they don't have to understand it's your choice for you to be successful today. So I'm just going to get out um, this. I'm going to wake her up because she's probably still chillaxed. And I will um, get her. Oh, she's not even there anymore. Oh, there she is. She's, she's, you can't see her. She's off the camera. Um, she's gone to see where Swagger was in the bed. Okay, so I'm going to swagger. Can you hop it up on the bed? Okay, busy. Give him a sing. Give him a sing. So I'm just waking her up because she was asleep by playing a game. You could play a game like a hand touch or whatever your dog likes to get them um, a little bit more in the zone for training. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to ask her to pop it up on the bed here. Right. So now if I said, and this is just a, she's, she's not wrong if she moves. What was that? Can't see your head. That's fine. 
She's not wrong if she moves. If I say, I can deliver a cookie and she's not wrong. So she's getting the idea, just stay there. And I can deliver a cookie. Now, the nuance of this, guys, is I'm not doing this. I want you to look at the difference between, I'll do what I just did, I'll do again. Now, watch the difference. There's a nuance in there. Did you catch it? LOH, maybe you can uh, delay, I think. Is yep, fine. there will be. So if you can catch what that nuance is, if they put it in the comments, if you caught that nuance. I'm going to do it one more time. Deliver the food reward versus cook. Two different ways to do it. One will create more clarity. One may cause a problem with your dog. So now I'm going to get her um, off of this break. Good. Nice. Have it up. Anybody catch the nuance there? See? I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to have her in a sit. Now, if I go in, she shouldn't move. Good girl. Cook. What's the difference between that and cook? I made it a little bit more obvious that time. I think Catherine's got it. What did Catherine say? It's good flying. Cook, pause, then deliver. So yes versus what is the, the other way that I'm doing it? And Millie wrote, second time, cook while moving arm towards. Correct. So if you are moving the dog toward, if you're moving the cookie towards the dog, the dog isn't even hearing the word, right? Because the cookie overpowers the understanding. The cookie overpowers the brain. It's the single thing that they focus on now. Your hand moving, it's just like if I did this. If I did cook and put my hand in my pocket, dogs know. Thank you. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Dogs understand when we put our hands in our pocket that, that there's a very good chance there's a cookie that's coming out. So if you are moving when you're trying to when you, before you say cook, or if you're moving as you say cook, then the dog's ability to, um, or the, the brain's ability to create an association between the word cook and the food reward is gone. It's like, it's like, I mean, yeah, they're still getting cookies for holding that position, but you're losing the ability to grow the understanding of the word cook. Super important. It's a small nuance, but a really, really important one, right? That you say the cue, then deliver the reinforcement. That the reinforcement is already broken up into the sizes you want, because if you're there breaking up a cookie as you're saying cook, again, they don't take the, the, the conditioning that we're looking for isn't going to happen. So when you're doing this at home, what I want you to do is stay nice and close at first, Cook, deliver right to their mouth. Because what is it that I want? I want them to not move and wait for me to deliver the cookie. So you stay close enough that they don't want to move. And then you're going to try it from a step away and say cook and get in there quickly. Eventually, you're going to say cook and delay just a, just a little bit of time before you move in because we want to know if the dog gets, don't move, the cookie's coming to you. Now, what if you say cook and the dog moves? Well, I would just hold my reinforcement and see if they would go back. And if they wouldn't, then I would help them go back and I would move closer. And I would do it again, cook, and then build some distance away. We want the dog to understand no matter what position I've left you in, if I say cook, I am delivering the reinforcement. Don't you worry about it. You don't have anything else to worry about. Is that clear for everybody? Claire grabbed, it's the pause because learning happens. Learning happens in the gap. 
We've talked about that on, on the podcast many, many times. The learning happens in the gap. Without a gap, we can't get that conditioning. And when I say learning, like there's different ways for an animal to learn. This one is a passive learning in that it's just the timing of things that they learn, quote unquote, learn what the word cook means. Okay. Does that make sense? Just leave me a, put, put in the comments. Yes. Or I'm confused or not sure. Remember in, in dog training, clarity is everything. I would say 40% of dogs will have a massive struggle. If you can't focus, if you, when you don't focus on clarity, why do I say 40%? That's a huge generality. Because 20% of dogs are going to be maybe a little bit like this. They're not instantly ready to work. They're not always, oh, what are we going to do now? Those dogs, when they fail, if they fail, they may not have the tolerance to failure. So if they fail once or twice, they're going to start sniffing. They might go visit somebody. So with those dogs at 20% at the lower end of the arousal curve, they that lack of clarity costs you. And so you get these nuances, you get more clarity. At the other end of the spectrum are dogs that are very uh, high. They're very excited. They're, they can easily get over aroused. And what helps, what often puts them into that state of over arousal is a lack of clarity. They might be working fine, but when they fail, they get more stimulated, more amped up, more, what? Oh, I'll try harder, I'll try it. Obviously, I'm not trying hard enough. I got to go more, I got to go more. So that's 40% of all dogs really struggle with your lack of clarity. And when you have one of those dogs, it's easy to kind of get disappointed in the dog. In actual fact, guys, if we can become better for them, and that's what this series is about, the nuances will help them help us become better for the dogs. Okay. Is that clear? D did that make sense? Um, so this is a great question. Should I only use cook for stationary behaviors? The word stationary is, um, is funny. I know it should be pretty black and white. Yes, you should use cook when you want the dog to hold a position. But if my dog's walking beside my left hip, they're moving, they're not stationary, but they're holding a position. I will still use cook for that. Cook means I don't want you to move out of your current position. That is an excellent question. Excellent question. Um, another great question. What's the difference between a cue and a marker? So in the example that we just had with Issy, the cue was sit. It prompted a behavior that the dog knows. The marker was cook. And it told the dog, what you're doing right now, I absolutely love. You're amazing. And the reinforcement will be delivered to you. Okay? Um, yes. Uh, Bob Bailey is the one who said reinforcement is a process. It doesn't have a beginning or an end. And that, that is a great, great quote that um, I think Bob, I may, maybe it might have been Marion ba Bailey was the first person I heard say that. I'm going back, back more than 25 years ago. So it's a, it's, it's a process and that's what we're, and that's what we're, that's what we're working on. Uh, Terry writes, my dog isn't food, interested in food. Can I do this with toys? Terry, you can, but. You need to get that dog interested in food and they've got to be interested in food because otherwise they'd be dead. So what we've got to do is use the value they have for, for, for your toys and get and create value for the food. And you will find that how to do that on shape by dog, go to YouTube. There'll be, um, in a playlist that will, that will help you with that. Okay. We're going to do lo location specific marker number two. All right. So we've done cook our next one is search. Now, this is a this one is even more difficult for people to keep the clarity of the hue or the location specific marker, keep the clarity of that marker separate from the delivery of the marker. 
super difficult. Let me just, I'm going to do a little demo without my dog and show you what I mean by that. Okay, so here's my. So the cue is search and it tells the dog um, that look for cookies on the floor. Right? And you can tell the difference. Lizzie, come here. Do you want right here? Sit. No, maybe you can up up there. Good. Now, if I say cook to her, she knows that there's going to be a cookie coming. But if I say search, she knows, look on the floor. Get out of there, look on the floor. So that is the clarity we want. If I say cook, she said, well, this is where I got all my cookies. Come here. Ready? I don't think we got her stand very good, do we? Come here, bye. Let's try the stand. Cook. Nice. Cook. Good. Search. Did you see how she moved? Because she knew I would be delivering the cookie to her. So the mistake that people make, the gap, what people do is they do this. Search. <laughs> good girl, is he? Right here. They get their arm back. They get their arm moving because they know they're going to say search. If you're going to do that, because you want, let's say you want to throw your cookie further, then you should be training with your arm back there. And then when you say search, you can then throw it. We need that gap between the uh, location specific marker search and the initiation of the throw. Just do things like this, three little. So I could just do things like this. This is her name. I can just go search, boom. Search, boom. Search, boom. So I don't have to like wind up. It's not slow pitch here. Search, good. Oh, there it goes, here it goes. If my dog can't find it, I tap my finger and help them find it. Um, but if I do, sit. So um, I want to test the difference between them. Cook. I might just pretend to throw. Cook. Search. Yay, good girl. Okay? You need to maintain the integrity of the gap, even if you're going to be throwing your reinforcement. So why would we throw reinforcement? Rather, why don't we just give our dogs the cookies all the time? Because there are things that we want the dogs to do away from us. And if they only get reinforcement at us, then there is no value for being away from us. Yes, when we mark it, we'll give them more reason to be, be, to be out there. But we want them to know, um, I'll just give you a little demo with here. We want them to know, let me see, let's take the bone. You're little. No. <laughs> Good. So if I just toss, you know, there'll be times that maybe I don't, I'm going to get over here. If I don't say a word at all, if I just toss a cookie at my dog, if she can catch it, then she can have it. If she comes out, off, if she misses it, she really shouldn't go out there. So I'm going to test this. I'm going to throw the cookie, but I didn't say the word. Search. So that was just a test. So if I, <laughs> good girl. So if I think, if I just throw it at her, good girl. I'm gonna give her, that was a bad timing of my cue, or my uh, uh, marker, cook. Nice. So she knows that this cookie is here, and she would like it. Cook, good. Search, nice. So having both those words in your back pocket as a trainer, you can get such clarity. Let's say I want to bring value for my dog just getting in this bed. I want this to be a thing. Sure, I can just go cook, 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 keep feeding them in this bed, but that doesn't tell them to get in the bed. That tells them to stay in the bed. So in order to get many repetitions of getting the bed, this is where I would use the cue search. And oh, sorry, girl, here, throw it out there. She gets in, search, throw it out there. 
search, throw it out there. Search. Now she knows to go out there and look for it. But look what up. She, she just had repetitions of getting back in. Many, many, many repetitions of going back in. Now we might balance that. Search. Throw it out there. She gets in. Cook. Search. Throw it out there. She gets back in. Cook. Good job. Okay? So we want those two, I mean, there's many location-specific um, reinforcement markers. There's many. We want to focus on getting clarity for you as a handler and for your dogs with just those two. Don't go crazy. Don't try and think of it. Just two. Get really, really good at those two. And then, and yeah, you don't have to use the words I use. I think hunt is a great word to use. Um, I think, um, I think that um, when I did um, um, scent work with my dogs, I used the cue search for find the scent. There and then you, you couldn't use search for find the cookie. You can't have them be the same thing. Okay, question here. I'm confused by this too. I use break as a release quite often, then toss a cookie after. Pausing, ensuring my dog understands the verbal. So I use break as well, but break doesn't mean look for a cookie on the floor. Search does. Search is very specific, right? You could say break and then search, but that's redundant because search means leave position, find the cookie on the floor. That's what it is. Okay. Now, I've got one more thing I want you to play around with, and it's a combination. I kind of just did a little foreshadowing. It's a combination of those two. So this is your homework for tomorrow. Number one, I want you to set up a video camera and video yourself training your dog. Three minutes, set a timer as well, using cook and search. Get that, get, go back and I would just video one minute and then set a timer for one minute, go back and look at your mechanics. The clarity comes through your mechanics. Make sure that you're not confusing your dog. The next, we're going to set up this little game. All right. So I'm going to put my bait bag on. So I have cookies more readily available. I use my pockets in my, in my pants just as often as I use it, probably more often than I use a bait bag. A bait bag is a little bit more obvious, a cue that there's cookies coming. So this is what I would like you to do. Give this game a go. Remember, don't jump ahead. Get your search and your um, cook cue. Get, I want you to become familiar with it. And then we're going to go to this next little game where what I'm going to do is look at the cute we can almost barely see the black dog in the black bed okay little can you have that nice let's get that over here now so what we're going to do is we are going to take a blanket you can make this as big as you want now my dog isn't that big so i think i'll just start with it and now I'll start with it big. Come on. All that I want is the dog to understand this is important. This is of value. So what I'm going to do is just like I did with the bed, I'm going to kneel down first and I'm going to say break. She gets on. Cook. Cook. And then I'm going to give the search word. Search. She goes off. Gets back on. Cook. Search. Now I'm just going to say search. Search. Because I know she's going to hang around. I'm sitting here with a handful of cookies. Search. I'm going to try now standing up. Will she come back? Because I'm standing right in front of this, I know she's coming back. Search. She's coming back. Search. Good. Now I can fold this in half. Give one cook because it's different. Search. Cook, search, 
search, do far more searches than you do cooks until you make a new one. Cook. Search. Now, there it is. It's right over there. Tap, tap, tap. It's right here, this evening. Good. Cook. Search. Fold it up again. I want you to keep folding until it's so small only their front feet can get on it. Search. Good. Cook. Cook. Search. Good. Cook. And now what I want you to do, up and down. You're not going to do all this in one session. Obviously, Dizzy knows this game. What I want you to do is, once your dog has that, go to something smaller so that was a blanket now i might use like a towel and i fold that up so eventually it might get super small i can go to a face cloth all i want is my dog's front paws on there right now cook search see if i can get that with me standing cook cook and if your dog can do this search you're going to try with you further away. Do they step over it? Which they probably will. Now I'll wait to see what gave you your reinforcement. Cook. Search. Cook. Search. I want them to understand there's something magical about having your front paws on that target. Cook. Cook. Search. I'm going to come back closer. I don't want her to fail. I want her to understand front feet search. I really would, I think I'd like her to stand more. So I'll give her more cookies when she's in a stand search. All right. Cook. Search. Cook. Search. Okay. Missy, how about? Okay, got the supervisor on the job, making sure we get all this right, that nobody makes a mistake, right? Mr. Senor, he gets it. All right, so lots of things that I did in one session because my dog understands the word search and cook. Get that understanding of the cues of the markers search and cook then go to the big blanket. Don't be in a hurry to get away from the blanket because your dog may not back up and say, oh, I'm going to offer this. Why did she back up and offer that? Because I did so much. The word search helps the dog to have value for finding the blanket. The word cook helps the dog to have value for staying on the blanket. So you need to balance that. Actually, it doesn't have to be 50-50. Most dogs need more value for finding the blanket. So I would probably do search 75% of the time. The only time I change that is when I make that target a little bit smaller. Then I go up more for, for staying on the blanket. All right. So a lot of things packed in there, but I'm going to grow this tomorrow. And this is going to, so search and cook are, are critical marker words that give your dog great information. And now I want to help you grow that information. Tomorrow is, is going to be about uh, building a skill that everybody's going to want for your, for your dog. Number um, on Wednesday, what day is it? Our third, um, fourth anniversary celebration live and unscripted. Our third one is all going to be about the sport of dog agility, but it'll be appropriate for any sport. Plus, Anybody who's never had a dog before is going to learn a lot on that third one as well. So all of that is going to be an advancement of search and cook. I'm just going to answer questions. Uh, why cook instead of good or yes? Oh, my God, you guys ask the greatest questions. Excellent question. The word yes is actually, even though they're all one syllable words, think about how long it takes to say yes. Yes. Yeah. As soon as you start it, yeah, it's over. It should be over. But after like, cook, cook, it's like, takes that much time versus yes. So we can be a lot more specific with the word cook. The other reason why I like the word cook 
is um, you don't, I don't, I don't actually use that word very much now. And there's the hidden, you know, they understand that it, it means cookie. So do my dogs, do I use yes as a marker word? Occasionally I use the word good more. I used to use yes all the time. Heck, the name of my business is Say Yes Dog Training. So I used to use yes all the time. I just found you could get better results. It's about the nuances, right? You could actually brilliantly trained, train any dog with the uh, location-specific marker word of umbrella. Dogs are brilliant and they would learn. But it's about the effectiveness, the efficiency, uh, how we can create the greatest clarity for our dogs. So that's why I I suggest you, you know, would probably be better than cook or, or good even would be just, um, just a noise. <clears throat> I don't know. Some dogs maybe not like that. Boop. I don't know. But it's got to be ultra short and something that you can be consistent about. How many marker... Uh, can the average dog understand? I would say it's probably limit, limitless. As long as you teach them with clarity and you keep bringing them back to remind the dog of them on a regular basis, I, I would say there is no limit. I think there's a dog in the Guinness World Book of Records that could identify the name of like, I don't know, 600 toys or something. So dogs are, dogs are pretty brilliant. Um, can I use a thumbs up for my senior who... Loves to train, but is losing his hearing. Absolutely. For those uh, dogs. Now, if you have a dog that's losing their vision, you can use a tap. If you have a dog. Now, even if your dog is losing their vision, you can still use search, right? So, you know, you might like do a single tap from delivering a cookie. You might do like multiple tap. I'm, you know, there's, there's things that you can do. Um, that, that can help bring that clarity to dog, no matter what it is that if they're losing their hearing. I love, love, love that question came in because Trudy, our senior dogs need training as well. It's just such an enrichment activity for them and it makes them feel important. So I love that. Um, can you just explain why you want the dog to not move? Because it, it helps to build the understanding of what we want. So if I'm feeding my dog in reinforcement zone, I want, let me just go in and uh, do this. I might have to alter this a bit. Okay, that's not gonna work. Okay. So if I, just tell me if you can see me. Is he here? So if I want to tell my dog that I like where they are, if I just pardon, just if, if I just said, oh, good dog, search, then I'm not helping to build understanding of this behavior. So if I break, if I just said, yeah, that's where I wanted you. You see, close. <laughs> that is horrible. Ready? Close. That's better. So if by saying cook and giving the dogs a cookie there, I'm building value. Close. So no matter where I am, cook, there's value for being here. If I did this, watch how quickly close. Watch, I can keep my dog in that position. If I bring my cookies out here, she's still going to stay in that position because she understands that, close, that the reinforcement cook comes there. If I started to feed here, cook, cook, what would happen to my beautiful walk beside me? It would very quickly be walk sort of in front of me. Right? Close. So I'm very particular. I want my dogs, you know, they can be an arm's distance away from me. They can be smelling things, but we're walking. I don't want them tripping me up in front of me. Cook. Right? Thank you. All right. All right. Already. Um, do you work on distance before just duration? Um, kind of go a little bit of both and it really depends on the dog. So a dog like thisy, 
as long as I stay close, I can build duration quite easily. Um, she needs me to be um, a little bit closer to help grow her confidence. So it really depends on the dog. A dog like my my puppy Prophet, I could work at a distance very quickly. Um, it's the dis the distraction, um, the duration for him that you know you can be far away, but don't ask me to do this forever. So it really depends on the dog. My trainer taught me place. My biggest battle was stay on a blanket. How do you choose? How do you teach break? Uh, I teach break in crate games. Crate games, the winner for most everything. I mean, it's the foundation of everything I do. Um, the everything that you, that that is in our like our, our program handling three six or excuse me, homeschool the dog, and uh, crate games online, recallers. I do absolutely everything that are in those programs. That's how I raise my puppies. So my dogs have great understanding of their release cue. Why? Because we've done so much great games. They have great understanding of walking um, beside me. Why? Because we've done so much reinforcement zone. So um, yeah, if and and if you're not in one of those programs, but you're interested, um, and even if you're interested in, in dog sports, that, like I said, at the end of this week, I think on... Thursday, we will be opening all of our programs. And if you want to learn about that, if you go to, they're not open now, but you can go and look at them. If you go to shapebydog.com forward slash four years. Anniversary. So it's four years, right? So if you want to learn more about what I'm going to, what's going to be coming up at the end of the week, um, go there because all of this, the nuances are all in our programs, but they are they are magnified so that we keep growing on the nuances to add more complexity through understanding for the dogs. Okay, um, I've got a couple more things. I know I'm, I'm getting close to being an hour, but you guys had amazing questions, and I and I didn't want to leave those left um, undone. First thing I'm going to do is share who won today's tug toy which this he was playing with. And that is uh, Jose Pere. So I, I don't know if I'm saying your name correct or not. Um, believe it or not, I do have nine years of French under my belt. Maybe not so good though. Um, so that's today's. Remember, we're going to pick another. If you're watching this on a replay, if you, if you share it th through the replay, we're going to pick another one. All right. I want to, um, one thing I did mention was the um, the things that sabotage our training. And I think like I, I've given you three key things to work on here today that I encourage you to do for tomorrow. So the things that could sabotage your ability to get success, to get the, the kind of clarity your dog needs so that they're not stuck in those 40%. Number one is the belief, I already do that. I've, I've done that before. I don't care if you've been in my program for 20 years. My students who have been in the programs for 20 years say, I learn something every time I watch Susan, every time she teaches, every time she trains a dog. Why? Because they are lifelong learners who stay curious. So if there's something inside of you that watched today and said, I, I do that already. I know how to do that. Watch it again. What can you learn? What can you be curious about? That's number one thing that's going to sabotage your training. Number two thing is comparison. Oh, my dog didn't do what Susan's dog did. Just be curious. Look at your video. Oh, did I get, did I stay away too fast? Did I not get my reinforcement? Oh, I was moving when I gave my reinforcement. Comparison is the old, the old t-shirt said, comparison is a thief of dreams. dreams. Don't compare your dog to my dog. If I compared this E as a, six month old, one year old, two year old to other dogs I've had in my lifetime, she wouldn't be the dog she is today. I just train the dog in front of me. Please train the dog in front of you and do not compare to your other dogs, your past dogs, your friend's dog, your dog's litter mate. Stay in your lane. Keep focus on the dog in front of you. Stay curious. What can I do to make this better? Bring more clarity to my dog. All right. Another thing that, um, is perfectionism. 
I've, I've just got to be, I, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to rewatch this video 18 times, which I think it's great to rewatch it at least once. I'm going to rewatch it. I'm going to take notes. Then I'm going to um, do a calligraphy of my notes and I'm going to make a big poster for my walls. Then I'll be checkboxing everyone. And then no, you know why you're doing that? You're procrastinating. You know why? Because you're afraid to fail. Embrace failure, my friend. I do it all the time. And the beauty is our dogs are okay with it because most often when we're failing with this kind of training, we're just giving them an extra cookie that maybe we shouldn't have. Never a bad thing. So that I kind of got a few in there that is going to sabotage you. One, being a perfectionist. Two, being afraid to fail. And three is, is um, procrastinating. You've got this. It, don't overthink it. Watch the video. Take notes. Take action. Right? So don't be afraid. Don't say I'm too busy. I'm, it'll take you two minutes. I, I don't expect you to do all three of these behaviors in one session. Work on your cook, then work on your search, then work on your cook and search in one session together, then try the blanket. All right. Is this good? We good? We all good? Um, all right. I said, I've got another prize. This is from the good people at Blue nine. Look at this. I don't know if you can feel like, imagine this. Imagine that you're feeling this. Oh my gosh. This is memory foam. I can tell you in great honesty. I have had very deep naps on these beds. So this is a restore bed and it's intended to go on top of climbs, which I think everyone should have a climb, but guess what? It kind of if you've got those um, pop-up dog beds, they go on there too. Or I just put it on the floor and I'm happy for it. You can get um, that in a single or you can get it in a double. Tomorrow, I'm going to start tomorrow's live by giving one of those away to the person who shares their dream that inspired and touched my team's heart. So we're going to put a link here where you can share your gem, dream, gem, same thing. Share your, what was your big takeaway? What was your big aha? It can be put in more than one post if you want. And we're going to, it's on my Facebook page. You can go to YouTube. If you're going to YouTube to do this, if you're not on Facebook, here's what you need to do. Or I'm going to ask you to do it. You don't need to do anything. You know what? You're here because you're curious. So when this live is over and you're watching the replay, which will happen shortly, Please, first of all, give a thumbs up on that YouTube video because YouTube deletes all the thumbs up that happened during the live. And then, then you can just post how you genuinely felt about the live. Just put a comment. You know what? I think that lady should have maybe done something with her hair before tonight. Whatever it is. And then share your gem in a post. My team will look at all of them on YouTube. We'll look at all of them on Facebook. They'll pick one that is their favorite. And tomorrow, we're giving away a restore bed for somebody. Okay. So um, if, if, if somebody on the team put the link to YouTube once we get that. Oh, there. All right. Tomorrow it will be 1 p.m. The same time right here. Same place. But it's going to be brand new learning as we actually grow what we taught today. Adding more clarity to a skill. I know all of you are going to want to have. Okay. Thank you for being here. You guys have been awesome. Please give yourself some hearts. I love, love your questions today were off the chain, like such great questions. So thank you. And, uh,